Now, you'll notice here in, in James 5, 7, be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Every time we comment on this as we read it, uh, we do believe that he's coming. And he said, be patient. Well, we'd like for him to come. Why doesn't he come? Behold, the husbandman waiteth. Well, we know he's waiting because he hadn't got here yet. Why hasn't he come? He's waiting on something. There's, some, there's a reason why he hasn't. What is the reason? He's waiting for what? For the precious fruit of the earth. No, he's not talking about a peach crop or a plum crop or a tomato crop, fruit of the earth. He's talking about a spiritual crop, a spiritual harvest, isn't it? Of the earth, of the earth. Now, see, that's the main thing. We need to get a worldwide vision, not just for our own little old church, our own little old city, our own little old county, our own little old state, our own little old nation. Amen. Amen. I was preaching one time in California in a church and they'd, they had built this church building. It was a newer building. They'd built it, I think, uh, 15 years before. You know, nice brick church. Put a balcony in it, but never had anybody up in the balcony. So finally, you know, it was situated back up here to where you know, no lights was on, dark, so they just stored stuff up there. You couldn't see it down the main floor. And, uh, and maybe just some special occasion when some certain rallies and a number of churches come together, they might fill up the lower auditorium. I don't think in our meeting we ever did just pack it out. We'd have it comfortably full sometimes. So we were praying like we were here earlier. Spirit of God said, he said some things to me tonight here. He said to me, if, if this church, and I, I'm going to paraphrase this in my own words now. He didn't just put it in these words, word for word, but this is the essence of it. If, if they want this church full and they won't see it running over, you tell them what I've told you, how to do it. And then I saw, while I was praying, I saw people get out of their cars and run to get in the church. I saw the parking lot full, so some people parked down the street, you know, on the sides of the street, certain streets you could park on. And it's in such a hurry, they just jumped out and ran, never did shut the door, <laughs> the car door, because he's trying to get in, you see. Now he said, if they'll do this, here's what they're supposed to do. You're going to have to do it through intercessory prayer and soul travail, but you're going to have to do it by putting everybody else before you do yourself. Before you ever pray for your own family, your own children, or your church here, pray for the church down the street. See, right two blocks down the street was another full gospel church. Pray for them first. Pray that they'll be blessed before you are. Pray that their building will be full before. You see, after all, if you pray my building will be full, that's selfish. That's not going to be heard. That's not going to be heard. You might as well have twinkled your thumbs and said, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Done just as much good. Selfish. Pray for the other churches. Pray for your neighboring church first. Before you pray for your children, pray for your neighbor's children. Before you pray for your own nation, your own country here, pray for other countries, foreign countries. Pray for the missionaries. Pray for the heathen. Put everything and everybody else in the world around first before you. See, we haven't done that. They know you're so lying about it. There's not a church that's done that. That's the reason most of them are dead and dying and worse. Just interested in their little bunch and what we're doing. Not interested in anybody else. So they, 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 they believed that. They accepted what I said the Lord showed me and what I saw in the Spirit. We was back there then uh, last, uh, oh, about a year later, preaching another church close by in another town. And my wife went over there because one of the ladies of that church owned her beauty shop and She'd got her hair fixed there when we were there. So she phoned, went over there in the appointment and she came back and the lady said, now be sure to tell Brother Hagin last Sunday we had a church full for the first time. Full. Well, now, of course, a lot of times folks don't hold that because they, before you know it, it's the easiest thing in the world to get self-centered, isn't it? I said, isn't it? Yes. Yes, sure it is. That's the easiest thing. That's the natural thing. 
But we're not supposed to be natural people. We're supposed to be supernatural people. Amen. 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 See, we excuse ourselves and say, well, we're so natural. We're so natural. I already know that and you know that. But you're not supposed to be. You're supposed to be supernatural. Amen. You're supposed to think. You're supposed to live. You're supposed to believe beyond the natural. Amen. Don't shout me down. I just call the preaching real good. <laughs> Not many do that. <laughs> Mighty few tell you the truth about the matter. And not any to the full extent that it ought to be. But we can. Amen. Amen. Well, now notice, he's waiting for the precious fruit of Tulsa before he can come. No, he's waiting for the precious fruit of the United States. He don't care a thing about the rest of the world. Let him go. No, no. Earth. Precious fruit of the earth, of the earth, of the earth. That means the whole earth then, doesn't it? Yes, Not half the earth, the earth. Then there's going to come a harvest worldwide then, isn't he? Right. Before he comes. Amen. He can't come till it does happen. That's right. Can you see that? Yes. Can you see, if that's what he's waiting on, well, now somebody said, what about these folks that are predicting things are going to get worse and worse? The devil's going to take over everybody. We're all going to have to go underground, hide in a cave somewhere. I don't know where they got that. They sure didn't get it out of the Bible. Amen. Or they may have took some scripture and twisted it and took it out of its setting. But this plainly said, anybody, this is what I call a foolproof scripture. Amen. Amen. It says, be patient therefore, brethren, under the coming of the Lord. He's talking about the Lord coming and us being patient till then and unto then. Behold, the husbandman waiteth. What's he waiting for? That everybody gets hid? <laughs> What's he waiting for? The devil takes over everything? No. He's waiting for a harvest. He waiteth for the precious harvest fruit of the earth. Doesn't it? Isn't that what it said? I call that foolproof. Now you get over there and Daniel and you get talking about something, get over in Revelation and get talking about some of those images and this and that and the other and you know, you can put all kinds of interpretations on it. Make it say this and make it say that and make it come out here and make it come out there and use it never comes out like you thought it would. I've been hearing them do that for 50 years. Man, if you would have seen me in the late 30s and early 40s, you talk about a f prophecy preacher. You never heard any prophecy preachers like me. <laughs> Man, I had all the answers. I could just rattle off verse and chapter after chapter and pages from history. I was always a history buff, you know. Come to find out I'm just wrong as the rest of them. I just left that alone. I left, I left that alone, alone, alone. <laughs> I left that for those that don't know any better. Bless their hearts. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't just stay off of it entirely. Of course not. But I'm talking about speculating. No, I got over on what I call foolproof scriptures. <laughs> Amen. No, 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 no. You couldn't misinterpret this verse to save your life. Unless you're crazy or insane, something like that. Could you? I said, could you? There's no type or shadow here. There's no horseman riding a horse <laughs> or a creature. Amen. Amen. Isn't that right? It just plainly said. Be patient. Therefore, brethren, under the coming of the Lord. Now, how could you misinterpret that? Some people interpret he's not coming. Well, that's not what it said. Better read it again. It says he is coming. It says he is coming. Well, if he's coming, why don't he come on? Tells you exactly what he's waiting on. Tells you exactly why he's waiting doesn't it? Amen. Don't leave you in the dark at all. Don't have to get some kind of revelation out of the sky. I mean, just go to school two days and learn to read. 
But the husbandman waiteth. We know he's waiting because he hadn't got here yet. He waiteth, what for? For the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and the latter rain. That's what he's waiting on. That's what he's waiting on. That's what he's waiting on. Amen. He's not going to come till then, so there's a worldwide harvest coming. Has to be. Has to be. Amen. 